Can you tell who's gay and who's not? Of course. Do some research. Find out if there's a way to tell by just looking at them. Jim told me you could buy Gaydar online. What are you doing? Shh. Don't be scared. It works. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. Studies, though, have shown that humans can tell gay from straight from appearance alone. But despite what you see in that clip from The Office, there has never been a real gaydar device. Until now, researchers from Stanford University have developed an algorithm which they claim can tell gay from straight from photos alone. It's all based on facial recognition technology. That technology scans your face, looking for unique physical traits like the size of forehead or the distance from your eye to ear, then creates a geometric map of your face and compares it to a database of thousands of other people. The Stanford researchers say their algorithm gets it right 81% of the time for men and 71% for women. All of this raises questions about how the new face recognition technology will influence privacy and sexual identity in a brave new AI world. And joining us is Professor Nick Rule. Welcome. Thank you. So you've been studying gaydar for a long time. There seems to be more support. It's actually a thing. That's true, yeah. In the last 15 years, my lab has been showing that people can accurately tell whether someone is gay or straight just from looking at a photo of their face. Wow. And so this new study, uh, can you describe how it works using AI, artificial intelligence? Essentially what the authors of this work did was to take uh, photos of people from online dating advertisements and feed them into a computer algorithm that it then taught to tell whether someone was gay or straight. Based on that, they found that when they tested the algorithm without showing it any, uh, any images, that it could still accurately tell it about 81%. Well, let's, this is uh, something that, was, that they used. The computer was asked to say which of these, which man is gay and which man is straight. How would that actually work? And what do you think of how it was done? Right, aside from some of the obvious differences with the facial hair there, uh, the straight man has a wider face. And this isn't surprising at all. Uh, straight men would generally have higher levels of testosterone, which during uh, adolescence would cause their faces to actually become wider when their bones are growing. So if there are actual physical differences that can be identified, does that support the idea that we've been hearing about, arguing about forever, that there's a gay gene? Well, a gay gene, I'm not so sure, but there's I, the evidence in favor of there being a biological basis for sexual orientation is incontrovertible at this point. These are all from a dating site. That's how they got the, the faces, thousands of faces. Is That's there right. something particular about a dating site? Does that worry you in any way? It is just faces from a dating site. Yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, Photos that we post on dating sites aren't necessarily how we represent ourselves every day in the world, right? Uh, we take a lot of time to think about what, how we want to look on a dating website. We want to look attractive, of course, and that can definitely change the photo that someone chooses. That said, at the same time, research out of my lab has shown that it doesn't matter whether we use a Facebook photo, if we use a photo that we took in the laboratory, or if we take a photo from someone's high school yearbook even, um, the rates of accuracy for telling whether someone is gay or straight are pretty much the same. There's been a lot of, in history, their phrenology, there's been all mm -hmm. assumptions made about people's bone structure or whatever. There, there, there's dangers here, are there not? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, people can go a little overboard with misinterpreting the information that you get from someone's face. Uh, that said, there are kernels of truth at the same time as well. You're a gay man. You've done mm -hmm. all of this research. Are, are you concerned how bad actors, say, you know, the country of Uganda, which kills gay men, are you, how this could possibly be misused? Definitely. I mean, I think to some extent, you know, a, a government like Uganda or, you know, Chechnya could take this information and automate, you know, sort of identifying gay people um, and rounding them up and incarcerating them. Um, and I think that's a concern that, you know, we should all have. But at the same time, that it's not necessarily a concern of the technology as much as the people who use it. So was this study good or is it a good thing that it's out? I think in a way it is. I think it helps to agitate some of the, uh, the policy discussions around the protections that we need for you know, social categories like sexual orientation. Uh, when you look at a lot of the rhetoric that comes out of you know, some politicians' mouths um, in other places outside of Canada, you hear this argument that 
people, you know, shouldn't be, they don't need to be protected in terms of their sexual orientation because no one knows whether they're gay or straight until they say so. I mean, these data suggest otherwise, and it, it supports a lot of what my lab has been showing for a long time now. A lot to watch for there. Thank you so much, Nick. My pleasure. Professor Nick Rule.